Okay, so what we're looking at now is the receptors in the eye. Now you know already from GCSE that the receptors in the eye are all in the retina. In this retina, if we just imagine that this is the retina at the back of your eye, of course you've got your optic nerve going off and you've got your lens and all that kind of thing. In this retina here, you've got rods, and you've got other type of cell called cones. Now I'm gonna draw the cones as cones and I'm gonna put them right at the back of the eye there because that is where light is focused if you're looking at something and you want lots of and lots of detail, okay? So this area here is called the fovea. It contains a concentration of cone cells. You get cone cells all the way around the periphery as well. You know if you look out the corner of your eye, you still see colour, but the number of them is reduced. So mainly we say that they're concentrated here. For rod cells, they are distributed all around the periphery and less so here. So they are all around the outside. Now again, you'll remember from GCSE that cones detect colour. So you know from GCSE that cones detect colour and rods detect just light. If I just draw my rods like this, rods have what we call retinal convergence. Retinal convergence. In, all, in other words, they converge on the retina because these perhaps three, four, five or whatever share a neuron. So each of those join together and they would go off to the optic nerve. So each of these little bits here is called a bipolar neuron. No big deal, it just means that it connects there and it connects there, okay? But the benefit of this for each of these rod cells is, remember in the last lesson when we learned about action potentials, we said if the generator potential isn't very much, the um, sodium potassium pump will sort it out and a th and threshold might not be reached and you won't get an action potential. Again, another little bit of generator potential, but it's not so big, the sodium channels aren't affected, the sodium potassium pump sorts it out and you don't get an action potential. What happens here is we have something called summation. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to think, okay, we're adding the impulse from there, the impulse from there, and the impulse from there together, so that all of these little ones that might be dismissed elsewhere, because we're adding them together, you're more likely to reach threshold, you're more likely to get your action potential. And because of that, what we can say is that rods, can be, rod cells will be stimulated in dim light. You don't need a huge amount of light to set off an action potential here. Why? Because the little bit of stimulation there is added to that one there, is added to that one there. You're more likely to reach threshold. You're more likely to get an action potential. And you're more likely to be able to see with a limited stimulus. Now that's the good news. The bad news is that that neuron that's carrying off information to the brain doesn't know whether the perceived image shone light on that part of your retina, shone light on that part of your retina, or shone light on that part of your retina. All we know is that light somewhere landed anywhere there and started off an action potential. So, in essence, what we're saying is that although you can see in limited light intensities, which is true, the clarity, the visual acuity of your image, the visual acuity of your image is less. So, although 
when you uh, are in dim light, you can see objects, you can't see them very sharply. And that's because the image is blurred because you don't know where that, la that light landed. Now, let's just have a little think because when we described the Passanian corpuscle, we talked about how it was the stretch mediated sodium ion channels that caused the whole thing to happen. In this case, it's not like this. In these rod cells, you contain a pigment called rhodopsin. And when light lands on that rhodopsin, we get a bleaching effect. And it breaks down into retinal and opsin. And it is those chemicals inside there that then change the permeability to sodium and start off the whole action potential. Okay, so the Pacinia couples, that's why we start with that one because it's a really nice visual way to think. I can imagine myself pushing on that and opening the sodium ion channels and that starts the action potential. In this case, rhodopsin, which is a pigment that's normally in there, when light hits it, it breaks down into retinal and opsin and that's what changes the permeability to sodium. And then of course, later on, we build that back up using ATP back into rhodopsin. So here we've got our rod cell. Here you can see we've got our bipolar cells, which are just attaching each rod cell up onto the optic nerve. And so it goes on. So uh, as we've said, you're more likely to uh, reach thresholds because you've got summation, because they're being added together and they're being added together because of retinal convergence because you've got those rods um, converging. How is a generator potential started in a rod cell? Well, you get light, breaks the chemical down, starts to generate a potential, and more specifically, we've said that that process in the rod cell is called bleaching, and we've said that rhodopsin is broken down into opsin and retinal, and um, that to build it back up again, it takes ATP.